Come exactly a week from today, the first part to a very special chapter will look to be inscribed into the colorfully vivid perpetual football history books. April 22nd, at one of the homes of world football, the massive Estadio Azteca in the world's second largest city, is the day the first leg of the CONCACAF Champions League final is set to be played to get the decision rolling on who will represent the North American continent at the 2015 FIFA Club World Cup. On one side, the heavy favorites and most successful, which also means the most hated, Mexican team. Club America, Las Aguilas, proudly backed by a contingency of over 30% of the Mexican population, holders of five North American Champions League titles, just one shy of matching rivals Cruz Azul. Their challengers, holders not of multiple titles, but of one of the most attractive underdog stories in recent times at the CONCACAF Champions League who quietly at first and then heroically made their way to the finals are the impact of Montreal playing out of the unofficial European capital of North America and Major League Soccer's 19th franchise. Considered not first, not second, but Canada's third most popular side. And leading the four years old MLS side is uh, Argentinian playmaker the Cordobes Ignacio Piatti, which brings me to my main focus. Can the 30-year-old left midfielder who came out of the modest, though fiercely supported Buenos Aires neighborhood side Chacarita Juniors bring the first main title to the Quebec side? Forget just Quebec, but can he bring the U.S. and Canada's third North American Champions League? I surely can't wait to find out because if they're able to beat America, even more incredibly, Piatti will be winning two different continental titles less than a year apart. Since it was only last August when uh, he led Buenos Aires side San Lorenzo to win their first ever Copa Libertadores. Now, we've seen his fellow countryman Juan Pablo Sorin participate early in uh, Juventus' 1996 Champions League winning campaign and then head down to Argentina the same year to win the Libertadores with River Plate. Or eternal Brazilian captain and two-time World Cup champion Cafu won South America with Sao Paulo in 1992 and 1993 and then the uh, Europe with Milan, but uh, 10 years apart. There are a few others, no more than 10 in total. However, I think it's safe to say that this is a first for two separate continents on such a short period of time, and especially remarkable for being North and uh, South America. In a country where ice hockey and not football is a national sport, this couldn't be a more attractive final, truly along the lines of uh, one of those soon to be a major motion picture. The MLS franchise has a chance to forever put themselves on the map as first Canadian club to ever win a major football title. While at the same time, their beloved number 10, Nacho Piatti himself, will be seeking to write his own story and join that classy group of players to have conquered more than one continent. But the first player to achieve this impressive feat in less than a year, I think we all know who I'll be going for come late this month, in Montreal's beautiful Olympic Stadium. Allez Montréal! Thank you, until next time.